shrinker and expander, which uh, for uh, uh, the shrinker and expander, I call a direct expansion uh, just a different way of doing the same instruction. But we, I say like, uh, for example, well, I think I got an example coming up next. And basically, expander makes different instructions that, that do the same thing. Shrinker converts them back down and so that you can have your uh, same uh, virus sk or code skeleton, if you will, each time. Yeah, here's an example. You have uh, your original code where you uh, move one reg uh, register two and register one. And uh, that's uh, just the same as doing uh, push register uh, two pop register one because all you're doing is using the system stack to move it. And uh, I just put, decide I put the byte code on there so it actually shows that it's um, a different, it's um, creates just a different byte code. And that's pretty big. I, that's the one thing I really, I'm always up for trying to do. And uh, so uh, the addition to it is the idea of uh, creating, be able to create random expanders uh, because uh, these regular expanders are easily caught by just looking for them instead of like any other type of search for three bytes. You know, if, you, if I saw a push register uh, one, pop register two, I know that was just a move instruction that's been expanded so I could shrink it myself and therefore know what the code's supposed to be doing and have that original code skeleton. So it's uh, just the basis of uh, figuring out ways, rule-based, uh, to figure out ways of how to create these random expansions. And so like an indirect one would be, uh, like um, as we see here, we got, uh, since um, we do, before we do pop register one, the idea of the rule is uh, that register one becomes a free register where you can do whatever you want with it since all you're doing is waiting for it to pop at the end uh, off the stack to do your standard move operation. And so you get it, it's, it does increase code size, but it does uh, give you a different signature for uh, even just one operation like we see for this. And uh, yeah, this is the part about the whole uh, idea of using the rule. Uh, the rule is uh, Register one can be manipulated before any point, I, or at any point before the pop of register I one, and, and therefore, I, since you have that rule, that's why we can stick that or in there and add random registers and values to um, and to register one in that earlier example. And um, then I uh, next uh, for generating the, these the ideas of. Uh, if you have uh, just label the areas, and there's those rules, uh, you just for each area you have a different combination of rules since it depends which uh, set of labels you're within at that time. So it's uh, just a basic uh, ordering of all the rules together. So you can do so if you're in two uh, in two sections, or if you're in a section that's within two uh, boundary points. Uh, you can decide to um, use both of these, uh, both of the rules together, and stuff like that. Say, like for instance, this one, um, we can see that uh, rule one starts at the beginning of of uh, the code and ends uh, right before the pop register one because uh, pop register one is when the rule tells you that you can no longer randomly use register one. And then I just had some stuff on like basic metamorphic viruses, if I, because that's where they first started from, and that's um, I just some ones to check out that are usually uh, really good. Metaphor was the first one that was a uh, fully uh, metamorphic virus had both the, it actually had a shrinker in it as well as a code expander and various other stuff. I th there's also the executable trash generator that was written by Zombie, and that one's uh, great for just creating random. Uh, you can pass in instructions, and it'll output random uh, random uh, um, opcodes for you, and you can tell it which what you want as your destination registers, what you want as your source registers, and you have some instructions you can pick out of. So you just set all these flags, push it in. I think I got it on the next slide. Yeah, here's uh, calling it. <laughs> so you just um, you tell it how long you want it, point towards the so buffer, and then the rest is uh, just telling it what instructions it can use. That I uh, and so 
what you want as your source and what you want as your destination. And there's also one other tool that I forgot to mention that other page that's um, called the Microlength Disassembler. And uh, that one's great for, uh, so you can do incremental development of this engine because you're going to have to map your opcodes kind of to do your own parser. So this one, you can stick this uh, Microlength Disassembler, which I think, I can't remember the exact length, but it's, it's nice and small. Uh, you can basically uh, take this and stick it in as your else. So if you don't feel like um, mapping an operation, it just drops through to this. Uh, the micro length disassembler will tell you the length of the uh, instruction, and therefore you can just skip over it and go to the next one. So um, when we're um, using the uh, executable trash generator to generate our code, uh, since we'll be mapping to show where we can, where the registers are in the opcode, I, I, I just would go by sticking the EOX in for uh, your source as well as destination register if you have two or any, anything like that since um, they'll just give you all zeros in there so you can easily map a, another register in there by just doing it, orient it in there. I think, I, yeah, I said orient it in there. You can. It's just if you yeah if you do that or put in there I think I've got a little something on uh, yeah I, I put a little something on extracting uh, reg register values uh, out of uh, opcode and it's uh, well if if you just got it mapped like so then you know uh, which you, which you got to or and which you got to and to get to mess with stuff and like on um, in some um, Here's just a, like a small algorithm for, uh, or just sh uh, showing how uh, adding that register in would work. It's it's easy as oring it in as uh, like that first push and the pop as shown, in. and it's um, if if you just or that in, it just go goes into there and co combines with the rest of the opcode. And uh, I say for if you have a mobile piece of code, and uh, since if you fully ever fully shrink something, say with these old metamorphic engines, they always made sure to never shrink itself completely, because then you fall into the same hole that you have when you're using regular um, encryption, because your encryption at one point or another it's got to be decrypted so you can use it. And if you uh, fully uh, fully shrink the, this, you just get the standard looking um, uh, code skeleton. So this uh, code skeleton you can pick up in memory and it'll always be the same, so you always have to leave it somewhat unoptimized or it's just easy as checking memory to find um, find what it looks like. And uh, since we are going to try to randomly generate these um, expansions, it, so, uh, the idea and see that was right in there. <laughs> I, the, I, the idea is uh, that since uh, we're going to be developing new um, and new expansions, we can't for, and we can't fully shrink it, or it's it's pretty much worthless to use. Um, you have to have find some middle ground to pass uh, these expansions on to the next one. So I just have it that the shrinker knows that I. Gen uh, generation n as well as generation n minus one. It knows that I, the shrinkers that were I develop or the shrinkers for the random expansions that were developed during those generations. So it's um, and then of course your expander uh, it creates the expansions that go into the n plus one generation, and therefore you kind of just carry half of the older generation. You create half new. And you just keep on going from there, and you always just drop the old one, develop the other half again as your new uh, set of expansions. And you always, uh, but to make sure if you want to, um, that you don't end up just having geometric growth like a regular uh, trash code generator, uh, you got to fully shrink uh, the n minus one generations expansions because uh, to, uh, you you would lose uh, by n plus one, you would have uh, n is you end up losing that uh, generation of how to shrink that and therefore just leaving trash code in there that's not reversible once so you're uh, to be re to use. 
enzyme, I assume this is an improvement on metamorphism uh, because in um, your standard metamorphic virus, when you have your expansions and shrinkers, um, it's easy as just scanning for these things um, for studying. And usually they only go about five deep in most codes for uh, doing expansions. So you optimize it five times and you've got the original code. So, um, but hopefully by, uh, it just adds like a little more complexity is really all I'm going for is because um, you don't have, it's not as easy as this is automatic. You can't just have like a database of expansions and check that towards the code since you can randomly generate a, a fairly large amount of these um, expansions. So it would make, it wouldn't make sense to just use like a database of them or just to have them so you can just brute force it or anything. And uh, for using this technique, it's, um, well, I, I, I'm still working on the engine, um, but uh, for using it, it's, it will, I, I do believe it will work because of um, adding these r random op codes in there, it will uh, keep us away from just sta the standard and easy optimization and stuff, but also it, rather than just using a trash generator and I, uh, uh, combining the code of the trash generator with the expansions and not worrying about the shrinking, then you just I uh, got uh, something that's exponentially growing generation to generation in comparison to actually being know how sh to know how to shrink it, and therefore no longer having that uh, exponential growth. And I uh, well, this was uh, one of the 20-minute presentations that they just started doing this year, so I I kind of. I just I kind of went a little quick and through those, uh, and I'd, I'd like to uh, open the floor for questions if anybody uh, is up for asking any. And I uh, thank you for coming this morning. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs>